Mr. Steal Your Girl find out why your girls are sliding into my DMs. That's right, your girls have been sliding into my DMs. But it might not be for what you think. I'm not trying to say that I'm Mr. Steal Your Girl and that I've been chatting at the ladies online behind your back. No, no, your girls have been sliding into my DMs to show me naked pictures of you guys. <laughs> of you guys, because, and this is the point in this video, they are not worried but they're concerned with the attitude some of you guys have got now that you're really getting into the gym and you're getting very involved and obsessed is a word they're using a lot. I've been getting these on almost a bi-daily basis. So it's like at least one or two messages every two days since maybe the beginning of December through to January, which makes sense because it's a time when people are really starting to think about what they want to do, New Year's resolutions, new goals, new mindsets and all that. So like in this particular case here, she's his girlfriend and she's messaging me saying, and I've been an inspirational part of his journey into the gym and how he's learning to develop his body. But then they start to get obsessed, which is part and parcel of bodybuilding and the fact that it is such a committed process or maybe if you're going into becoming some form of athlete for like CrossFit or something like that, again, it takes a lot of dedication and a lot of time and it starts to make you critical. But what you won't notice is that the people around you are noticing this alongside you and it's not always for a positive. So here we've got a girlfriend just saying, you know, that this guy, he used to suffer from seizures and things like that. Uh, so he decided to get fit, clean up his lifestyle and it's really helped him in that way. But now he's uh, feeling like that's sorted out, but he's happy with the gym and now he's getting obsessed with wanting to get bigger. And she says, and this is the common thing that a lot of you guys don't know about your girls. They already think you look good. They're already proud of you for the journey you've already taken. But when you're looking in the mirror, they're noticing that you are being so hypercritical that you're not seeing the progress that you've made anymore, that you're now just criticizing yourself and becoming obsessed. And that's what I wanna talk about today. And this is what all these messages have been about and why your girls have been reaching out to me, to offer, asking me advice and saying, how can I let him know that he's doing well? And so I'm gonna give you a couple of rules today that are hopefully gonna help you stay on track Still keep making those gains, but also make sure that you are not becoming an utter butthole around all the people in your life. Because trust me guys, no matter how good you look, there is nothing in this world more boring than a human being whose conversation at the table is nothing but gym talk. You do that and you instantly become the black hole, the vacuous succubus of fun in the room. So here's some top tips to help you not be an utter Number one, missing gym days. Don't freak out. It doesn't really matter if you miss a single gym day here or there because something happened and you couldn't get there. Don't start feeling like the whole world's caving in because you haven't been able to get to your training session. You can either add on something extra, add on some extra exercises and extra sets on other days to make up for it if you just want to create that balance. But what you need to understand is missing one day out of many isn't gonna have any impact at all in the grand scheme of things. As long as you are consistent on a more week to week and monthly basis, that's what matters. Always be thinking big picture rather than day to day. The moment you compress everything in day to day analysis, the more little errors are gonna seem like big errors and really they are not. Just like taking weight, when you step on that scale, you take the weight, you note it and you put it down, but you only take an average of the seven days. That's what matters. Cause you're gonna fluctuate up and down every day. You're gonna be different, depending on your sleep patterns, depending on what you've eaten, depending on the time you finished eating, the time you started eating. There's many, many things that come into play on every single day. And that's why we always look at those averages and longer time spans. So don't freak out, relax, you can make it up, or overall, if you're just consistent and it's one single error out of many that are successful days, it's fine. Rule number two, meals and meal frequency. Here's the big kicker. Most of you guys, you're probably thinking, I need to eat six, seven, eight meals a day. And then when you miss a meal, you're freaking out. Again, it does not matter. Meal frequency has been disproven so many times over. What matters is 
The amount of calories you're getting in by the end of the day and the breakdown of those calories into your macronutrients, proteins, carbs, and fats, that is infinitely more important than the amount of meals you have in a day. So whether you consume your calories over two or three meals or five or eight meals, it makes zero difference in the long term. Now, for you, whatever you feel better doing, that's fine. Just understand that it doesn't matter whether you have three or eight meals as long as the calories are in. Now, if you miss a meal during the day, your muscle will not fall off. If you don't get a meal in within 30 minutes of leaving the gym, once again, the muscle will not fall off you. The body is always in a balance. The body is smarter than you are and it will take it as you give it. The main thing you need to understand is you need to fuel your development. Now, whether that means weight gain or weight loss, you need to keep your food up. So if you're trying to lose weight, you need to feed the loss. And that means eating as much as possible while still losing weight. That's gonna allow your body to keep firing high while still burning fat. Equally, if you're trying to gain weight, you don't want to overload the food. So you only need a small surplus of calories every day to help slowly edge that weight up. So once again, don't start piling food in if you're trying to gain weight or strip loads of food out if you're trying to lose weight. Make sense? On to number three. Number three, supplements. Just because you're going to the gym now and working out doesn't actually mean you need to start drinking protein shakes. It also doesn't mean you need to start carrying around with you a 30 gallon jug of water. Supplements are just that, a supplement to an already structured and analyzed diet, meaning it's tailored to you and your needs and your goals. So start looking into your food before you start looking into spending money on supplements. Does that mean that you shouldn't take supplements? No, not at all. Supplements definitely have their place, especially in our lifestyles today, where everything's a little bit fast paced and we need to hit numbers. And by numbers, I mean macros, which we already just talked about, like a protein shake. That's gonna help you get in more protein in a small, compact, easy to consume form. A shake, which is gonna be way quicker than having to cook up some chicken to get that protein in there. So yes, they have their place in helping you be more consistent day to day, week to week, month to month, but can you do it all with food? Certainly. Is it gonna be as cost effective when you price up the meats compared to the whey protein? Maybe, maybe not. That's gonna be down to you, your budget and your choices. My advice to you would be the three things that you need on a good solid foundational stack, creatine, five grams a day, do not load it. That was a ploy to make people run through creatine faster and have to buy more. Just five grams a day because it doesn't work straight away. Anyone that says, bro, took my creatine, feel the pump. It's all placebo. That is not an acute supplement. That works over time to build up in your system, but it also means you need to be consistent with it for it to work. It will help you with recovery and energy output. It'll also make you look a bit fuller because it helps you hold water within the muscle, which is actually an added benefit of creatine. A whey protein, straight, simple, because you can add in carbs and fats to a whey protein. If you buy a meal replacement, you can't take things out of it, which limits its use. And on top of those, I would also advise a good multivit, something that has a really good breakdown on the back. Make sure that it has in there some selenium and some zinc, magnesium and things like that. Check the dosage levels, do some research on what the minimum should be so that you're definitely getting value for money. Outside of that, my personal favorites are some pre-workouts. I opt for that EHP PSI or the EHP RP Max because they're a split one is stim-based with caffeine, one is pump-based with blood flow and focus. So it allows me to split my um, pre-workouts depending on what my workout's gonna be. But again, buy to your budget. If you can't afford supplements, it's fine. You can do it with food, don't worry. It's just gonna mean you're gonna have to do a little more chewing. Number four, and with this I'm talking mirror blindness. Mirror blindness, what do I mean by that? I mean looking at yourself every single day in the mirror in a hypercritical fashion. You are not going to be able to judge yourself in a fair manner if you are scrutinizing yourself morning, noon, and night in a mirror. Especially don't go and read some kind of bodybuilding magazine and then look at yourself in the mirror. That is the worst thing that you can do. What I would advise is take weekly update photos. Do it at the same place, at the same time, under the same conditions, and that will give you a more realistic look at the way you're changing. And also, learn to take compliments from your family. When they tell you they're looking better, don't shrug it off. Take it on board that people are noticing that you're changing and that they can see it even if you can't. Because a lot of people can't take a compliment and refuse to believe it. They think people are just being nice. That is a major sign. If someone's saying, dude, you're looking well, and you're like, well, I haven't changed at all. 
you've got mirror blindness. Video yourself as well whilst you're working out to make sure that your technique and your form is okay, as well as seeing how your physique looks whilst you're training. You'd be shocked at how muscular you can look and you don't even realize it once those muscles are firing and you're moving, because you're getting used to looking at yourself in only set positions. So this is the thing that we need to be focusing on. It moves into looking at major points and major factors throughout your journey. Stop focusing and giving warrant and giving a lot of energy to the small insignificant things that don't really matter. Because a lot of people to put too much time, too much energy and too much weight into something that is really insignificant. Stop, breathe, step back. What are your major goals? and give them a realistic time frame. It does not take eight to 12 weeks to create a long-term change for your body. That is bullshit. Yes, we can create change in that time, but they're usually not sustainable and they're usually fucking miserable. So this is a marathon, not a sprint. It's a long-term game. And if you're not prepared to be in this for the long-term, then find something that you will be prepared to stick out. Last but not least, number five, be aware of yourself. Just like those people that you sit talking to and they're scrolling on the phone and not really paying attention. It's kind of rude. It's no different if all you ever chat about is gym, food and boring crap. Most people don't care, mate. They really don't care and you're gonna start losing friends because of it. You're certainly not, not gonna be making new ones. So start realizing what you're talking about. Catch yourself when you're getting a little bit chatty about stuff others don't care about. And what that will actually do is help you disconnect a little bit yourself and help you relax and not be that disgusting gym douche that stinks of chicken and broccoli and just annoys everybody else. I mean, seriously, do people not have boundaries anymore when it comes to things? <sighs> anyway, I hope this has helped you out. Let me know in the comments if you want to know anything else. Till then, catch you in the next one. Lately I've been doing shit different Cooking like a chef, I've been all up in the kitchen Had to make a move, had to make a little distance A lot of people tripping, they could never see the vision Fuck that, tell them bounce